All right, I've been very clear. I am rooting for Donald Trump. I always have been. I like the policies. I even like the style. Yes, I do. At times, I said maybe he needs a different audience on occasion, but uh, I want him to win. And I am feeling very, very positive about that. Today was a very good day in that Kamala Harris made her first big decision and half the Democratic Party thinks she blew it, and uh, I think she blew it as well. Turns out she found the guy who was, well, just as radical and strange as she is. His name is Governor Tim Waltz, Democrat of Minnesota. Thank you, Kamala. And that was a message from President Trump himself on Truth Social. <laughs> Thank you, exclamation point. Because this guy, Waltz, is, uh, well, very, very liberal. Um, no charisma. Nobody knows who he really is. However, the one thing, he's got a couple of things going for him. He's going to get along with Kamala. Look at these two laugh at nothing particularly funny. It was about 20 minutes of this, just laughing and giggling. I know, okay, you want to celebrate, but <laughs> even for a moment like that, it was a bit much. So now it's the Harris-Waltz ticket. It was just Harris for president. Notice how there's no promise for America. It's a promise for her. Harris for president, not make America great again or anything like that. No agenda for the people, just one for her, make her president. Now it's Harris-Waltz. Quite frankly, uh, they just don't look compatible. There's something Harris Waltz. How's that for a campaign theme? How do we get here to a relatively nondescript but very, very liberal guy is now the Democrat nominee for vice president? This, no kidding, is what made him a hot commodity in Democratic circles, a word that most of us first used in second grade and pretty much dropped it around third. These are, these are weird people on the other side. They want to take books away. They want to be in your exam room. That's, that's what it comes down to. And don't, you know, get sugarcoating this. These are weird ideas. If he has laughed, it's at someone, not with someone. That, that is weird behavior. That stuff is weird. They come across weird. Weird, weird. Oh, that's so edgy. That's so interesting. Calling us weird also. That's kind of ludicrous considering Joe Biden sniffing hair and uh, all the stuff that this guy is into. Let's give him a shot, though. Let's look at the pros and cons. I really tried, and this is what I came up with. On the pros side, he looks relatively normal. He does look a lot like a social studies teacher, one that I actually had. And rumor has it, he likes to fish. And they think that's going to fool the people. Like, oh, he's a good old boy. He likes to fish. I don't know if he actually does like to fish. Makes no difference to me. On the cons, let's go ahead and put that up. Uh, totally insane politics. He is weak. He is woke. A radical liberal. The very online adult daughter. More about her in a moment. And the first lady of Minnesota, totally out of touch. And we can go on and on and on. Actually, let's do that right now. If you think any of these words are not nice, well, this law that he signed is not nice. Get this. Tampons. The tampon law. Public schools provide menstrual products for free in girls' and boys' bathrooms, grades 4 to 12. There are a lot of things the government can do or should be doing, you know, roads, I don't know, bridges, <laughs> schools, but not going into the bathrooms. And this is what it's all about lately in Minnesota. Check out his key ally, someone he endorsed and got a lot of help from on this law. Not all students who menstruate are female. Um, we need to make sure that all students have access to these products. Um, there are obviously less um, non-female menstruating students, and therefore their usage will be much lower. And that was actually um, calculated into the cost of this um, and how much we decided to fund it. And so we, we do not expect that the non-female menstruating students will use um, these products as much as the, the students using female bathrooms, but it's important to have them there. Um, and that brings me to the, just the social emotional reasons for that. Um, these students who are not female, who menstruate um, face a greater stigma and barrier um, to asking for these products. And so providing them in an easily accessible place um, in all student bathrooms is particularly important for those students. Did we get all that? Uh, the government going exactly where it shouldn't be going. This is insane beyond belief. It's kind of comical. But then again, this stuff is actually showing up in fourth graders' bathrooms 
all kinds of questions and and choices, quite frankly, that they shouldn't be facing. And Waltz, he's into all this stuff. Look at him clapping at a, like a lunatic. Uh, this trans person said something he liked. I don't know. He's leading the charge. It's like she won the World Series. Uh, she or he did not. He is, all right, he's really into the trans stuff. He's really into illegal aliens doing whatever the hell they want, and he's going to make it easier for them. Today, Governor Tim Walz signed the driver's license for all bill into law. This will allow all Minnesotans to get a driver's license regardless of immigration status. It's done. <laughs> room at the St. Paul Armory erupted after the governor's signature made driver's license for all the law of the land. He's going to be a very kind of um, high value target for Republicans, for MAGA, because he's the governor. He didn't just vote on these things. He signed it into law. He's leading the state. He's like the president of Minnesota and his record is rich. He's also saying all the right things for a woke man in the Democrat Party. I understand that the privilege I've been given as a white man and the privilege of sitting in the office of governor, that privilege had better be used to not just talk about the problem, but to solve the problem. This kind of nauseating stuff, speaking as a white man, speak for yourself. Nobody wants to be judged on this, except for people like him who live in mansions. He lives in the governor's mansion. More on that in a moment. You got to talk like this in the Democrat Party. It's a very peculiar moment. Three white men, I don't care, but they do, were in consideration for the vice presidential spot. Why three white men? Only because Kamala is a woman of color. That's the way the calculus works. It shifts. That's why, that's why these three were eligible. And he's really into this, oh, I'm just a, you know, I'm just an old white guy. What do I know? He says it all the time. Some of us, some of us are. <laughs> Some of us, some of us in here are old enough to remember. I see you down there. I see those old white guys. Some of us are old enough to remember. I hate that. It drives me crazy. And it usually is said by leftists, white people, right? As a way to enhance and fortify their power, their status. Speak for yourselves, but it trickles down. That's actually fashionable. In your neck of the woods, what about at the bus depot, right? What about around here? Nobody wants to be judged on the color of their skin, but it's fashionable and it's a trick for him to enhance his power. Does that make sense? I hope so. All right. Also, on the George Floyd stuff, uh, this guy failed miserably. Y'all remember? Y'all remember what happened to the precinct and the rest of that city? And he was totally late. Everybody understood. Uh, this is a huge liability. I don't see how he got nominated here. I mean, everybody understood that he was late. He didn't deploy the National Guard for like four days as that city erupted because I think, quite frankly, being a white person inhibited him. Oh, who am I to call for law and order? And the city and the state and, quite frankly, the world suffered because they got out of hand in Minneapolis first and then it caught fire globally. We are seeing such damage and destruction throughout Minneapolis and St. Paul. Things have gotten so out of control, it is hard to understand. It's been a chaotic, at times violent day in South Minneapolis, turning into a situation unlike anything we've ever seen in our community. From Chopper 5 up above, we can see the plume of smoke drifting towards downtown Minneapolis. Started vandalizing the building, shattering a window, spray painting squad cars. We are asking the governor, we're asking Mayor Fry, what is the plan here? We saw people throwing rocks at police cars, at the precinct building. This has gotten so out of control, it is definitely not a safe situation for anyone. The tragedy would be if one of these dumpster fires spreads to one of those big apartment buildings or some of these homes, and then you can't get a fire truck down the street. Please, Governor Walls, Mayor Fry explained to us what the plan is. We've seen protesters attacking police, defacing buildings, and looting from businesses. This place is completely trashed. A lot of stuff has been hauled out of there. Sadly, no police presence in that area whatsoever. I'm just so baffled. If this is being in charge, this is not a good look. 
that should end a political career, not make it, not set you on your way to be the vice presidential nominee for the Democrat Party. That's what government is needed for, law and order, save people, protect property. Um, and they didn't. They're handing out tampons in the boys' room in fourth grade. All right, got to talk about his family for a moment. His wife did a little uh, Marie Antoinette uh, kind of routine during Black Lives Matter riots in 2020 as she sat in the governor's mansion. I would say those first days, you know, when there were riots, I could smell the burning tires. And... Um, that was, that was a very real thing. And I kept the windows open for as long as I could because I felt like that was such a touchstone of what was, what was happening. A teachable moment? Are you crazy? Did you confer about it with Tim? Instead of, you should have been handing out milk and cookies or coffee to the National Guard as they were sending in the troops to downtown instead of having some sort of moment in the mansion. These governors and their mansions, it kind of sickens me. I saw this with the Atlanta people as well. You get a mansion, it goes to your head. They think that they are the presidents of the head of state. I guess they kind of are in a weird way of Minneapolis, Minnesota, whatever. Hey, they dressed up the mansion in pride, of course, right? You got to do that these days in the Democrat Party. Hey, something else about George Floyd. Um, he honored him. Now, before we, we see how we honored him, let's review who this guy was, okay? Arrested nine times, multiple years in jail, uh, drugs, trespassing, theft, aggravated robbery. You heard about the, um, the knife threatening the woman, the pregnant woman. The porn videos are neither here nor there. It is just a fact, and if we're gonna have statues about this guy, I think we should know the whole story, including the porn. Um, what, did, what did the governor say about George Floyd? He needs to be honored because he is uh, none of those things. He is a brother, he is uh, what, a beloved father, son, uncle, cousin, nephew, neighbor, and friend, blah, 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 blah. And how long? This is a proclamation demanding a moment of silence, and not just a minute of silence. He wanted eight minutes and 46 seconds for the people of the state of Minnesota to stand around and think about George Floyd. How about that? Something else government should not be doing, wasting people's time. We've talked about George Floyd before, by the way. The whole world has been told only lies about that case. We'll revisit another day. All right. In the meantime, they had a great big event, and uh, Kamala says she's thrilled, and she did look kind of happy today. The big thing that this guy also has going for him in Democrat circles is his military background. Oh, wow, a Democrat in the military. That's something to brag about, right? He is a veteran who served our nation in uniform for more than two decades as a member of the Army National Guard. And he went to college on the GI Bill. Uh, they are swooning about his military record. I found out a few things about it. Uh, I'll get to that in a moment. But first, not only Kamala bragging about it, the media, they love it. They talk more about this guy's military record than they did John McCain's. John McCain, five years in a Vietnam uh, prison uh, camp. It barely mentioned. This guy, watch. I first of all see Tim Walls, the veteran. I see someone that always puts his country first. He's an Army National Guard veteran. Minnesota Governor Tim Walls, a veteran and former teacher. He served for 24 years in the National Guard, the Army National Guard, as a yeah. commander. His resume also includes more than two decades in the Army National Guard, including a deployment overseas. A deployment overseas. I always wanted to see overseas. He deployed overseas, connoting what? Well, I looked it up. He deployed to Italy. <laughs> All right, not exactly tip of the spear. Uh, I understand not everybody gets to serve in combat if you're in the military, but it looks like he evaded service uh, for political reasons.